What'd you get for number five? Oh, um, uh, I got... Eyes on your own paper. Hang on for the loop. No talking! Four, three, two, one... I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie, and today we are testing our knowledge to see what we still know. I'm sure it's a lot. Yeah, we're a couple of smarties. Jamie, when you were <laughs> yes. in school, what kind of test taker were you? Okay, this isn't going to surprise anybody. I always loved studying really hard and then flying through the test, getting to the bonus question and answering that one too and getting really excited. Absolutely. See, <laughs> I liked studying because I liked figuring out different ways to help me remember information. So mm. I turned almost anything into a song. Uh, oh. So that's one of the ways that I liked remembering Would stuff. you sing it out loud while you were taking the test? 100%. <laughs> one time, uh, for a very long period of time, the only way I could retain information is if I talked to myself in an English accent. Is that a true story? That's a true story. <laughs> it wasn't a good English accent. <laughs> All right, Jamie, did you study for a test today? I couldn't because I don't know what's going to be on it. I just hope that they grade on a curve. Oh yeah, what does that mean again? It usually means that the test was too hard, so the teacher's trying to give the class a better grade by adjusting the scores. So they show a little grace. Yes, I just hope that the Loop Show teachers are gracious. Never know. If you tried to describe what God is like, it could be difficult or daunting. But when the people who wrote the Bible pondered the mystery of God, they consistently described God's character in this way compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, overflowing with loyal love and faithfulness. We're going to look at the second key word in this statement, gracious. The Hebrew word is chanun, which is related to the Hebrew noun chen. This word chen is often translated as grace, and the most extreme kind of chen is showing favor to someone who should get what they deserve, not a generous gift, like Jacob who cheated his brother Esau, ran away, and then after 20 years wants to come back and make things right. So he comes to Esau asking, may I find chen in your eyes? Jacob isn't asking for what is fair, but for favor. And surprisingly, that's what Esau gives him. He chooses to delight in his brother Jacob and show him grace that he doesn't deserve. Now, chen requires a generous spirit, which people sometimes have. But in the Bible, the one who shows more chen than anyone else is God. Like when God rescued the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, and they quickly betray him by giving their allegiance to a golden idol as their God. But then Moses steps in and asks God to consider giving a gift that they don't deserve. And God says, yes, by showing the ultimate act of chen, forgiveness and a promise to be with these people. Now, when we turn to the authors of the New Testament, they describe God's chen with the Greek word charis, which means gracious gift. Like when we're introduced to Jesus in the Gospel of John, we're told that Jesus is God's glorious charis become human, sent into a world of people trapped in darkness and death. Because according to the Apostle Paul, we're like the living dead. God has handed humanity over to the destructive consequences of our selfish decisions. But, Paul says, God is rich in mercy, and by his charis, he's rescued us. He's talking about how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are offered to us as a generous gift of life that is more powerful than death. And as with any gift, all one has to do is receive it. So now you can see why the biblical authors talk so much about this description of God's character throughout the Bible. When people are willing to own their failures and ask God for chen, he has a consistent and generous response. God gives the gift of himself, his life and his love. And this is what it means that God is gracious. I love how it says if we're willing to own our failures and ask God for grace that he generously gives it to us. God is always gracious. Ooh, hello, right. mystery hand. It's test time. Uh-oh. Let's play Are You Smarter Than Everybody? Uh-oh. <laughs> Spin the wheel and reveal an actual test question from that grade level. Mm. Quickly answer to the best of your ability on mm. the test paper in front of you. If you get the answer right, you get a cake ball. Nice. If you get it wrong, you get a Brussels sprout. Oh. <laughs> Thank okay. you. There you go. Oh, thank you, Whitney. Okay, so all of these are grades. Eighth, second, fifth, tenth, twelfth, and thirty-seven. What? All right, give that wheel a spin. Spin. Spin Crush that wheel. wheel. Crush the 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 w
wheel. Wheel, wheel question. question. All right, I think it's closer to second. Okay, second grade. To travel from New York to London, one must fly over which ocean? That's second grade? Pacific. Paci yep, Pacific Ocean. Spin that wheel. Well, it's closer to fifth, so we'll go with fifth. The Earth has four layers, the thickest of which is the mantle, which is the thinnest layer called... Two, three. Crust? Cheesy crust. Did you really say crust? Then the wheel, the question getting harder, and there is something in the Earth's 37. crust. 37, okay. <laughs> uh, the wave particle duality concept in the quantum physics was based on experiments that showed light and matter had particle or wave properties depending on how they were measured. But today we know these forms of energy are actually neither particle nor wave. What are they? Sorry, Jamie, I'm gonna need more time to digest. Alright. Frequencies? Sound. Alright, All right. Whitney. We're handing our papers off to our grader and we're gonna see how we did. I am worried that it was the Atlantic Ocean, not the Pacific. Oh man, we failed, Jamie. So the answers were Atlantic, crust, and then... Distinct quantum objects that we cannot easily conceptualize. Of course. That was my second guess. Okay, I uh, got the first one wrong, the second one right, the third one wrong. I got one of the questions half correct because I put cheesy crust. Two Brussels sprouts, one cake ball. I need a brain break. Let's see what else is on. Hey everybody, it's Jerry with the amazing Mess away. <laughs> You'll have a brighter day with Mess Away. It's like a sponge for grunge. When you have a mess, just send it away with Mess Away. Grime doesn't pay with Mess Away. What's up, Dust Bunnies? It's your boy Ed, aka Scooch. Hey, I'm uh I'm showing off a product here. Yeah, I love rags. I'm your sidekick, Scooch. Well, Shout out to my caretakers and custodians. You're interrupting. Well, I, I'm gonna help you sell some messy things. You mean mess away. Yeah, whatever, what, what does it do? <laughs> you know what, I'm glad you asked. The mess away has the latest and greatest in cleaning technology. Ooh. Tell me more about your magic napkin. Well, Messaway is more than a napkin. You can use it on your house, or your car, or your boat, or your RV. What about a steam locomotive? Mine's pretty dusty. Yes, that too. See, Messaway mops up any major spills or splashes. And it's made in Canada and Canadians make great stuff. They're very clean. They invented the garbage bag. Look it up. All right, let's check this out here. So here we've got a carpet. Say you spill just a bunch of cola on the carpet. You're just pouring that all over there. Oh no! What do we do? It was like that when I got here. A mess like this will stain your carpet. Are you following me, floating head guy? Oh yeah, I am watching you straight up ruin that carpet. The mess away will send the mess away. It's a simple three step process. Just like that, no other towel can do this. It's amazing. Check this out. Doesn't really look like you got all of it there, dude. Look at this. Yeah, that's gonna mildew for sure. Wow. With Mess Away, send that mess away. That'll have you saying, that's amazing. Yeah, I guess so. So that cleans up most of the spill, but what about the gill? Well, Mess Away, wait, wait, what? I mean, when I make a big mess, even after I clean it up, I feel like I'll never do anything right ever again. Like I'm doomed to spend a lifetime spilling measureless colas into infinite carpets, you know what I mean? I think so. Yeah, can Mess Away take care of any of that? If you think you've messed up too many times, you need grace. Cool, what does it cost? Grace is free. Yeah, it's a, it's a gift. Well, there's always strings attached, so do I have to like work hard to get it or promise to like never ever spill anything ever again? No, actually none of that. No, grace is completely undeserved 
and unearned. Sweet. I guess I'll never use a coaster again. My carpet is gonna be drenched in drinks. Wait, 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 <laughs> hold on. Let's rewind a little bit. Uh, Grace is free, but it's not cheap. Grace frees you from guilt and punishment, but it does not free you from the consequences of being rude. You can't just go pouring cola on everything because that would be taking advantage of the gift of grace, so to speak. So how do I order it? Grace is free to everyone. All you have to do is admit that you need it and you ask God for it. Whoa, grace is like amazing. Just like the mess away. This is just a cheap infomercial towel for 1995, plus shipping and handling. <laughs> grace is the real deal. Yeah, grace is like the best. All right, Jamie, I believe in this. We can outsmart this wheel. <laughs> Oh, cool. So we decided to give you extra credit. After you've answered, before we reveal if you're right or not, spin the grace wheel. If you get grace, you get cake ball, whether or not you get the answer right. Oh, nice. interesting. Okay. Let's spin that wheel. Spin the wheel. Eighth grade, Tom has read 11 pages of a 215 page book. He will read six pages each day until he finishes the book. Which equation can be used to find the number of, oh, great, okay, ha, huh. this is easier than, okay. Uh, number of days, D, it will take Tom to finish reading the book. Actually, I'm gonna do some reverse math first. Okay, the answer is D. I'm gonna go with that and I'm not even gonna spin the grace wheel. That's how confident I feel. Uh, I think it's A. All right, Jamie, do you wanna spin the grace wheel? I probably should, because I'm really bad at math. <laughs> All right, okay. spin that wheel. So let's spin see. the wheel, wheel of grace. Uh, grace, oh, that's nice. Okay. Blank by nature, Nick spoke very little, even to his closest friends. What word goes in the blank? Garrulous, equivocal, taciturn, arrogant, or gregarious? Garrulous. And I'm gonna spin that grace wheel. Okay, I'm gonna go with taciturn, and I am not going to spin the grace wheel. Wheel of grace, grace wheel. Yeah. Uh, oh no! Oh no! I'm sorry. I've never seen a wheel Uno reverse so hard. Okay, well that's it. So now we're going to see what the answers were. Oh, I got it! I think I got it. I got Grace, and then I think the yeah, I got Taciturn. I did not. Oh my goodness! I got both wrong. I even showed oh, my and work. Oh, I was wrong. I oh, showed D my was work. Wrong. Goodness. My fatal error was not reading the, read the whole question, all of it. I could use a little grace. And there's nothing like God's grace. Grace is undeserved. It's a gift from God, but God is not obligated to give us grace and we've done nothing to earn it. Think about it like this. Imagine that you have a test coming up and you've worked hard to prepare for this test. When that test is returned back to you, you got an A on it. Now that's not like grace because you deserved that grade. You worked hard for that grade and the teacher was obligated to give it to you. Grace is more like this. Imagine you had that same test, but you did nothing to prepare for it. You didn't study at all beforehand. You barely went to class, and when you did, you never paid attention. When you walked in to take your test, you wadded it up into a ball and dropped it on your teacher's desk. But when they gave that test back to you, it still had an A on it. Now that's more like grace. Grace is undeserved. It's not owed to us. But this doesn't give us the right to go around wadding up our tests. That's cheap to act like sin has no consequences because it does. But at the same time, it's offensive to act like there is a sin so big that God's grace can't cover it. That's just not true. We all fall short in sin. That's why we need grace. But God's love is so powerful and he is so mighty that he gives us grace. So what do we do? We understand that grace is an invitation to be closer to God. We take our sins to God and we admit them and grace forgives our past and gives us a new future. 
it increases our thankfulness and our freedom. Don't sink in your mistakes. Don't settle in your accomplishments, but rise in grace. Sin will no longer control you like a master. That's because the law does not rule you. God's grace has set you free. Romans 6, 14. Alrighty, it's time for our feast. Oh, oh my goodness. Brussels just... sprouts, cake balls. These, listen, y'all couldn't like roast them. I don't mind Brussels sprouts. I don't usually eat I like a whole one like that, but. This thing refuses to be consumed. It's really, really gross. Ah, feel. It probably tastes like grass and celery and a little bit of broccoli all combined. Yeah. It's almost as if you're not meant to eat these at all. <laughs> Cake ball is just fine. It's impossible to get every test question right. No matter how hard you try or how much you prepare, you will mess up. Yeah, sin knocks us all down. We can't earn God's grace. And we can't mess up too big to lose it. We all need grace. It's a gift we all get. If the test of life leaves you feeling low, let grace lift you up. It's good favor from our good God. Rise in grace. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Or enjoy the cake ball. That's good. Jamie, I yes. have learned a real big lesson from this test is that it's not easy to compare mm -hmm. how I did versus you, okay? Because mm -hmm. everyone loses in the comparison game. That's absolutely true. Everybody loses in the comparison game. I think that's close to the song. It Maybe is. Maybe you should just watch the episode. Yeah. <laughs>